please note that there may be some spoilers within this video about the two cartoon series. Thank you. everyone, this is Dragon Videos, ready to present another Owl House video, but instead of doing a usual list, I decided to go over a very interesting concept. You see, many people have been comparing this show with Gravity Falls, but they also mentioned a little bit of Steven Universe being in here. And that's the topic I'm going to focus on, how Steven Universe is very parallel to the Owl House. And of course, I know what you're all thinking at this point. Dragon, how in the world is this related? How is Steven Universe connected to the Owl House? Well, in this video, I'm going to talk about two themes that reside in both the Owl House and Steven Universe, and how the two of them are connected together. I decided that the two themes that I'm going to be talking about are love, which also includes self-love, as well as that of acceptance. So without further ado, let's begin! So right off the bat, we know Luz is a very wacky, go-lucky girl who seems to be very confident in what she does. The problem? She has a tendency to be reckless. She doesn't pay much attention to the consequences that come after her, and people run away screaming when she gets a little too creative, like she did with Juliet and the Sausages. Though, to be fair, William Shakespeare did have some very violent tragedies. Anyway, whenever she was in the principal office, her mom definitely has a tendency of always having to butt in and be upset that her daughter keeps getting in trouble. It feels like she would send her away to a camp. Granted, I would understand that she's only trying to do this for the best of her child, but sending her to a camp where you learn about mortgages and stuff? I feel like there could be a problem about that, which I will get to later. And in some cases, I feel like the relationship is a double-edged sword. So with, on one hand, they both seem to have an okay relationship. Not completely healthy, but at least they try to hear each other out. As well as that with her mom, she tries to be very loving and kind to her daughter. But at the same time, it just feels like there's something strained and it's like the mother's not even trying to understand her own daughter. And that's where Ida and King come in. They seem to help Luz find some sense of belonging in the world that she never was before. And in doing so, she made a big impact on their lives. King has someone that he can relate to in terms of having no one take him seriously because he's a little guy who seems to have some idea if he's a king of demons, though we have yet to have some confirmation about that, as well as Ida finally has someone who understands of what she's going through. And for Luz, she has someone she can relate to in terms of finding her own place in the world and feel comfortable in her skin. And then of course we have the Lumidy pairing. Even though it's a little one-sided at the moment and in the crush phase, I feel like with these two it definitely had grown over time. They both start off at butting heads and disagreeing at how they run things. But Emily's probably the only one who ever gets real with Luz without feeling repulsed by who she is. While with Luz, she finally has someone who can get on her level in a way where it doesn't feel like she's an oddball and a weirdo and someone who's not worth loving. And this is why I feel like the themes of love are hidden in there in more ways than one. And so here's the similarity to Steven Universe. The best example I could think of are the diamonds. So the diamonds are supposedly a close-knit family. They seem to run homeworld together, but the problem is 
Pink always got the short end of a shtick, always abused, and never had proper guidance of how to be a good leader, thus resulting a very strained relationship with Blue and Yellow, Pink believing that Blue and Yellow don't care about what she has to say about anything, and that she's just a nobody, a worthless diamond. It doesn't help that you have a very dismissive white diamond who seems to always do things her way, never acknowledging everyone else's feelings, and feels like that the government she rules is the right way to go, which we all know is pretty disastrous in more ways than one. This abuse definitely instilled a lot of fear and loathing towards a lot of gems, and a lot of people are not happy about it. Heck, even Blue and Yellow find this treatment so terrible that it was hard for them to express their feelings in a way that was completely healthy. But over time, as they began to communicate more, they definitely take a turn for the better, definitely finding things better than leadership and accepting their own feelings for each other. And then, of course, in I Am My Monster, this is where they begin to recognize the consequences they had on Pink Diamond in the past. Because of their inability to acknowledge Pink's feelings and also Steven's feelings, it resulted in this massive explosion of self-loathing and depression, frustration of what to do with life, that they didn't know how to address it. Steven, of course, was having issues with his mother's past and trying to overcome his own trauma, thus resulting in an unhealthy relationships with everyone around him up to the point where he viewed himself as a monster, a thing not worth loving. And upon thinking about it, I felt this would have been exactly what could have happened to Luz if she never went to the demon realm in the first place. Like Steven, Luz might be forced to hide her true feelings about who she is as a person and feels like she can't belong anywhere, which is possibly why she would always see herself as a nobody, because people always seem to run away from her whenever she does something creative and express who she is. And that's probably the disheartening part. And if she went to the camp, some people may say she might grow up a little, but in the process, it may just only make Luz feel like she just has to bury herself in there until her feelings practically explode. Like, think about it. You are dealing with an environment that would not be able to understand you or have the incapability of addressing your emotional feelings or set you up in a way where they make you feel comfortable and address the emotional problems in a way that are completely healthy. And thus, of course, this could bring up negative feelings that build up over time into a breaking point, which is very mentally and unhealthy in many ways. So, of course, in this case with Luz, she had to find a way to let go of those feelings of having to deal with being a screw-up, the thoughts that she can never be worth loving, or that she would never have the capability of being herself because she needs to fit in with the status quo. And this, of course, is why I feel like the Owl House and Steven Universe represents the themes of love, because they both know have main characters that are trying to deal with their own emotional problems and have proper growth where they don't have to be ashamed of who they are as people and have healthy, loving relationships with others. Now, as you all remember, the Emperor's Coven always had a coven system. Whatever magic you pick, you get stuck with it for life. No mixing magic, no wild magic. You are stuck with the nine tracks of magic, and that's it. And, of course, there's always strict rules and regulations about being an individual. If you didn't fit the status quo, then you might as well be garbage to the rest of society. And in a lot of ways, it's really unhealthy both emotionally and mentally, especially to individuals. 
So for instance, we of course have Ida. These laws specifically target her because she's capable of using magic. Wild magic basically, as well as just basically having her own free will and not being tied down to a certain cup. It's also because of this we have an idea that everything is not what's cracked up to be in the world of outlaws. And then of course, you have that one particular problem with her curse. She's rejected by everyone else because she doesn't follow the rules and regulations of the coven. However, it did not change the fact of how much of a good person she really was, though and some people may not always agree with that. And then, of course, we have the citizens of the Coiling Isles that are affected by this. So take the Hex side. Three particular students, Verbo, Barkis, and Viney, have been victimized because they were mixing magic, with Principal Bump always having to practically seal them away because they needed the money for the coven, they, from the Emperor's coven. However, we definitely know that Principal Bump may need to pay attention to how the rules are affecting the students, and may come back to bite him later on in the future of the series, and well, as well as restraining some potential of protecting magics from its weaknesses. And of course, for Willow, she was forced to do the Abomination track because she believed it would give her opportunities. And she was pressured to try to be under the negative worldviews of other ones that are other witches who view themselves as higher, more powerful, and she doesn't seem to value hers as much. This definitely gives off men a negative mental psyche as well as being afraid of expressing her own individuality, which was what Luz had to bring out more as the series progressed. And then, of course, someone who's heavily affected by this system is Amni. Amni's part of the Blight family, a very high up standards of witches. Not only that, but it seems to really suffer her friendship with Willow. It's also thanks to her abusive parents that she's forced to try to take on whatever challenges by any means necessary. And of course, the pressure from the Emperor's Coven as well as from the pressure from society is forcing Amni to have a hard time expressing her true emotions as well as expressing herself as a visual and doing magic her own way. In a nutshell, all of the citizens of the Boiling Isles suffer emotional stress. They feel like they can't be their true selves, let alone do whatever they want without worrying about the Emperor's Coven coming down on them, turning them to stone, or doing something far worse. And this also, in the long run, is going to affect a lot of people in Season 2. Now I know you're wondering of how this is connected to Steven Universe. Well, if you all remember it from Steven Universe, is that the gems would always get nervous at the idea that if they express their own feelings or go against Diamond Authority, there will be a whole lot of heck to pay. One good example, I might add, is Blue Diamond. Blue was never happy of how things were run back on Homeworld, even after when Pink was gone. She struggled with having to run the world while still trying to grieve for Pink. And as she tried to enforce the rules, the more miserable she became. But she could never voice those feelings, not without running the risk of getting White Diamond angry with her and probably doing who knows what else aside from practically losing every inch of color and becoming nothing more than a mindless doll. But when Steven stepped into play, she began to if, uh, accept her own individuality. She started to become a little bit calm and comfortable with herself, as well as allowing other gems to be who they are. While in some cases, we've seen that a little bit with Blue Pearl and Blue Zircon. They express some of their own individuality, even though they may run the risk of getting Blue Diamond mad. But we definitely see that with Blue Diamond, she lets some individuality in each of her gems. 
though it wasn't easy until much later in the Steven Universe series. So this is why I feel like this shows a strong example of how Steven Universe and the Owl House are connected in terms of individuality. So anyway, folks, this is basically my thoughts on how these two are connected. If you feel like there's something else I may be missing, please comment below, do a like, and subscribe to my channel. This is Dragon Videos, signing off.